I'm Sarah. I am a second year student studying at Brighton University. Uh, I study English literature and I'm a Christian. I have lived in Devon for my entire life, up until I was 19. It's a lot like Brighton actually, but it's, it's a lot smaller, like it's the whole thing of being by the sea, but yet being by the fields. It's a nice mix of it all really. I was, I was 14 when I decided that I wanted to become a Christian. For me, it's something that I've just always been drawn to. The fact that I have this community uh, wherever I go, um, it's quite special to me. So the best way that I could describe um, Christianity to you is actually a, probably a verse from the Bible. Um, and it's from, uh, it's John 3.16 which says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son um, so that others might believe in him um, not for them to perish but have eternal life and if there was if there was a verse to describe the gospel the entire bible it would be that one so I have uh, three siblings and um, two parents and then I've got on my dad's side I've got 11 cousins and um, eight aunts and uncles. You know, my nan was a very uh, strong-willed and she was a very much faithful person. And it's actually quite funny because um, in my family it wasn't a patriarchy, it was a matriarchy. Like, my nan was the head of the household and so she um, was just a, just a strong believer of the faith. Story for coming to Brighton. Um, is one where I feel like my faith just played such a big part. So I was never supposed to come to Brighton for university. I had a place at another university that was like two hours away from home. But basically at the last minute, I, um, everything completely changed. And for me, that was just a sign of the fact that, okay, well, something is calling me to be in Brighton at this time. I, I remember all the time when I'm having a difficult time here, if I'm really struggling with something, I know in the back of my mind that I have been led here for a reason. Do you know what? University is hard and I'm not going to sit here and say that it's the funnest, easiest time of your life. Like there are some real difficult struggles that come with it. Um, but for me, the way I look at it and actually just the way that I've kind of looked at it for a while now is the fact that I cannot get up in the morning and live my life without God. Yeah, he's a big part of, I guess, why I get up in the morning. I guess also just living out my faith in bright in whilst being at university is just the fact of I haven't run away from him, like noticing every day that I need him. And so for me that's in constant conversation with him. Like if if somebody is, you know, having just a really bad time and just struggling, I can't go up to them and say, you know, that that Jesus is so much more mighty than your problems and that he adores you and knows every part of your heart because they just, my housemates don't necessarily understand it, so I do find it difficult in that sense. I mean, the Bible tells us that, that Jesus is the light of the world, and when we accept him into our lives, that we accept some of that light within us, and so we become lights of the world. And actually, that's the best thing and only thing you can do if you are a Christian and you're encountering people with different or no faiths to you, um, is to be that light of the world for that person. The biggest misconception is the fact that people think we are homophobic and sexist and racist. In fact, everything that I've been taught is probably against that. Um, because the one and only thing that should matter about Christianity and about my faith is that we love others just as much as he, Jesus slash God, um, has loved us. And that's, that's the main thing. In my opinion, in my mind, we are all God's children and we are all so uniquely and astoundingly loved. There are so many things that I go through and I struggle with and I'm like, okay, what can I learn from this? I realise that as a human, I cannot do everything by myself. There are so many things that are just completely out of my control. To know that there is a higher being who has loved me before I was even born, who um, I think there's one psalm that says, you knit me in my mother's womb. The fact that he knows my innermost being, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. There is a God that I believe in who never wants to see me upset, who um, mourns when I mourn, who grieves when I grieve. 
um, who is happy when I am happy. And actually that's quite like a dark and scary void for me. Like I don't want to think about the fact of what if God isn't there anymore because, because I don't know how to live my life without him, I guess. The Bible says that um, when someone is brought to the faith or um, is redeemed or just accepts Jesus into his life or is just repented, um, that all of heaven roar with celebration. Like, and it's an image in my mind that I just am so fond of and just so conscious of the fact that um, when a new person believes, you know, there is such a celebration in heaven. Like, so thankful that there is one person that is now of the faith. He seeks us out. He um, he wants us to know him, and he wants us to be in a relationship with him, and love him, and be loved by him. I am still so accepted, even because of everything that I've done. Like I'm still so loved, and I'm still so celebrated. Over. Yeah. So that's what's really been touching me recently.